Good morning and welcome to the Breakfast Biscuit for Monday, October the 7th, 2024. It's 6.05 a.m. And let me remind you that it was one year ago today uh, that Hamas attacked Israel and there are still 95 human beings in captivity. Please keep them in your prayers this morning. So this morning we're uh, on a Breakfast Biscuit entitled Get Some Perspective from Psalm 66.9 and following so here you go here's your weather for today get ready for some good news here 69 degrees on the way to 90 for a high but wait for it a low of 56 degrees tonight hallelujah praise the lord no appreciable chance of rain today winds north northeast to 10 miles an hour and concerning weather uh, we have some dear friends that live in sarasota florida and uh, i know everybody knows somebody that lives in florida those folks are suffering, they're still suffering, and they're about to suffer again. Please keep them in your prayers, and on their behalf, ask the Lord for mercy uh, from this storm, Milton, in the Gulf. So, Sunday coming up, we started, we had part one yesterday of the woman at the well in a conversation with Jesus. Next Sunday, we have part two that begins with him telling her to go get your husband. And she says, sir, I have no husband. And he goes, yeah, you're right. I'm paraphrasing here. Yeah, you're right. You've had five. The one you're with now is not your husband. Ugh. Oh. Got to work through that. So we'll do that Sunday. I hope you'll join me. So here we go. You ready? Get some perspective. I learned more than I can tell you at Thompson, Mississippi, where I served as pastor for four years, three of which were involved in PhD work and pastoring the church. And I learned a lot. I learned what a church looked like that loved Jesus and understood its mission. I learned what Christians looked like who were committed to giving to the kingdom and people they would never meet. I learned what it was like to have a group of movers and shakers in the agricultural world and how they thought. I learned the following phrase, the whole world depends on six inches of topsoil and an occasional rain. The corollary to that was the whole world depends on six inches of topsoil and an occasional rain and only the Lord can make either one of those things. I remember during a particularly bad drought during those four years, we had a Sunday afternoon prayer meeting for rain. And at the very same time that we were having prayer meeting, Congress was meeting to, I'll never forget this phrase, to quote unquote, do something about the drought. Amazing. Pitiful on the part of Congress, wise on the part of our church people. God does so much for us that we never think about, but we should think about, and we could gain some perspective and feel a lot better if we would just get perspective on what, what he does for us. God does so much for us that we never think about. Listen to the psalmist in Psalm 66, beginning at verse 9. You take care of the earth and water it, making it rich and fertile. The river of God has plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest of grain, for you have ordered it so. You drench the plowed ground with rain, melting the clods and leveling the ridges. You soften the earth with showers and bless its abundant crops. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture and the hillsides blossom with joy. The meadows are clothed with flocks of sheep and the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. That'll help your perspective, won't it? Let me take us to the New Testament for just a minute. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice always, <clears throat> pray continually, and give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks in all circumstances is the attitude of gratitude, and it's what gives us perspective spiritually that every good and perfect blessing comes down from God out of heaven. And we have so much to be thankful for, and we must be thankful. It keeps our perspective. If you ate yesterday, thank God for that. If you can see this morning, thank God for that. If you can hear, if you can walk, if you still have gravity to depend on to hold things down, if you have children, if you've ever enjoyed sex, if you have hand-eye coordination, there is no end to what you should be thanking God for. Let's get to it. It's a sin to not thank God profusely during your Thanksgiving celebration, but it's also a sin not to thank God profusely every day for everything he gives and does. I have my time with the Lord early in the morning, but I come back for my sweetest time with him at bedtime. 
at night when everything's done. I get in my comfy bed under my ceiling fan in my cool clean sheets in the air conditioned bug free wonderful environment and I thank him for everything I think I can think of until I drift off and I've asked him to understand me eventually drifting off because I can't name it all and because I feel most at peace in his presence if you'll try it it'll make your life better let me pray for us Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, we thank you for six inches of topsoil and occasional rain. We thank you that you cause the crops to grow and that you cause the rain to fall. And Lord, we pray that we would have the attitude of gratitude and be grateful for what we get, for what we have, for what we get to do. Lord, forgive us of our sins this morning. Bind us close to you and to each other and let us glorify your name and bless your people. In Jesus' name, amen. So, May the Lord bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. And remember, as always, I love you. I'm praying for you. And I'll see you right back here bright and early tomorrow morning. God bless you.